everyone, I'm Julia and this is Julia at Home. Today I've got the baby with me and we're going to tell you a bit about the resources that I had out this summer for a little bird unit study. Um, and I don't mean little birds, I mean a little study. <laughs> um, so uh, my plan this summer was while I had a newborn young baby to put some resources out for the kids for them to just explore on their own for the most part and obviously bring me books to read to them. And so one of those things that I did was um, birds. And um, I... I got a few resources and we did read a few books, but we honestly didn't get to most of this. But I wanted to share it with you anyway because I do like the resources. I'm going to use them in the future. I'll let you know which ones we did read and what I thought of them and or used because some of them aren't books. <laughs> um, and um, hopefully it'll inspire some of you who might want to do a bird unit during your school year or next summer. Let me get started here with, um, I'm just going to show you quickly. I've shown this book before. This is Animalium. And it does have a whole section on birds. And so I had it out mostly as a display. Um, here I'm going to quickly insert um, a picture or video of our unit shelves and what they looked like. Um, I, just, I tried to put them all out in a pleasing way that's inviting for the kids to come and play with them. The art um, I bought and then printed online. I'll put text and link it below. So you can see, coming back here, you can kind of see an animalium. This is the Birds of Price page. And there's, you know, exotic birds. And there's just various, and they're gorgeous pictures. So um, I had that out on, on display. So I'm going to start with these two. And that is because my kids love Birds of Prey. I don't have them with me right now, but I actually gave them these two books on the shelf along with a stuffed peregrine falcon for my daughter and a stuffed bald eagle for my son because they are their favorite birds of prey. Um, so this one's Peregrine's, the Peregrine's Journey is a, based on a true story of a peregrine falcon flying from, I want to say Oregon, down to maybe Chile, um, down to South America. And it's just a cool, it, it was a cool story. We really enjoyed that one. And then, um, this is The Eagles Are Back by, uh, I don't know if it's Jean or John, I think it's Jean, um, Craighead George, who also wrote My Side of the Mountain. We also have um, The Wolves Are Back, and I think there's also The Buffaloes Are Back, and we really enjoy these. They're well done, beautiful pictures. Um, and you learn a lot about the animal, and not just the animal, but the whole ecosystem the animal is part of and relies on and what relies on it. Um, so they're just, they're really, really well done books. I'll insert a picture here of my kids with their stuffed birds. My son actually still sleeps with his bald eagle, who he's named Talon. This is The Boy Who Drew Birds, and it's about John Audubon, John James Audubon, I should say. We didn't get to this one this time, but we have read it before, and in the future I'd want to do an artist study on him as well, and this would be a really good book for this. I'm not sure. I think it might be out of print now, so you have to look for it used. I, I obviously got it used um, as I get most of, I get a lot of my books used. <laughs> Um, but I really, I really enjoy this book. It's got nice pictures and it's a good story about him um, coming to America and drawing birds, essentially, and how he kind of learned about birds by observation. So it's just another great one for nature study, learning to observe nature and learning about people who did that. Now this one is great if you're doing a bird unit. This could kind of act as a spine for you. Um, it's got... Um, in various chapters, it has information and then it has activities throughout that encourage you to do and tells you about anatomy and you can draw it. It encourages you to start a bird journal, um, which I would also encourage you to do if you're going to do a bird unit. I think that would be incredible. Um, such a good experience. So I, I like that one a lot. We didn't use it this time, um, but um, birdology just, you know, if you are going to do a bird unit, I would highly recommend it, and I'm going to save it for next time I'm doing a bird unit. Feathers, not just for flying. This is another one that I had taken out from the library before, but we hadn't, we didn't get to this time. Um, but it's really cool because it tells you about the different kinds of feathers and what they're used for. Um, here. So I thought that was a super cool idea. Classic, a nest is noisy. Um, you'll see... This series pop up in a lot of my videos. I have a lot of these books and I really like them. Um, the pictures are gorgeous. It's got the big uh, words that you can read to small children and then more information in the small text. Um, my kids always want me to read them the small text even when they're little. 
uh, this gives you more information on what the pictures are doing and and then it shows you a lot of these animals so again this is a, it's a nest is noisy so it's about animals that have nests it's not just about birds but I decided to include it in this unit um, let's see we've got Thunderbirds this is such a cool book we did look at this one um, this is again uh, birds of prey which it was a small focus on them and it shows them in life like uh, life size eagles, hawks, and falcons. Like, it's just so cool. Um, so it's got a lot of the different birds of prey in there and really cool pictures. Then some activities. I've got this birds of prey coloring book, which we also didn't get to this time, but I'm going to hang on to. And it's got pictures. And, and my intention is to just um, let the kids tell me what they want, and then I would copy it for them because um, I didn't want to have to get two books. <laughs> uh, and that way we can reuse it. So I, I like to do that. I have a copier, so... It's a little bit more of an expense, right, when you have to copy them, but um, I like to do that so my kids can both have the same page and I don't have to get two of these books. And we've got the Usborne 100 Birds to Fold and Fly, and this is just a book of cool bird-themed pages that you turn into paper airplanes. Um, so my kids still need a lot of help with this. Um, slightly older children, maybe like second grade and up, could probably fold it their own. Um, there are really good instructions that I follow in the front because I'm not that good at it myself. Um, so, but with the instructions, I can do a pretty good job. Um, and they fly really well. So we made a whole lot of these and there's actually a whole lot more left. Um, and I had to put them aside in a little basket because they were getting everywhere. So heads up, they will get everywhere if you get this. But it's a lot of fun for the kids. They really enjoy this. A couple things here I will link or I will um, link and put text below of where I got this, but this is just a, um, they're beautiful images here, paint like little painted images, duck, duckling, embryo, egg, and you'd have to put that, put them in order. Um, so it's kind of the, the life cycle of a duck, if you will. Um, and then I think these are from a different place. So I will also put that in text below, but these are, um, I think these are Tanglewood hollow actually, I'm pretty sure. Um, they have the bird, and then they have the egg, uh, the eggs of that bird. And they actually, the colors of the, like, um, the colors match. So my daughter was able to do that and just thought it was really cool um, matching those. And also if you have, um, it was, it worked out perfect for her because she's an early reader. Well, I don't know if early is the right word, but she's, she's a reader, but not a fully confident reader. And so reading some of these bird names, she probably couldn't do on her own, but with the help of the, the colors, um, she could start reading them because like some of them might be the same color here So she could start reading them and then try to identify which the match and um, use the letters as well as the color to help her with that um, So it was a good language activity as well as just learning what the different birds eggs looks like the uh, last activity I have here is the match a pair of birds memory game and we had this one already and honestly, we've done it several times. We, um, it's, they really like it. It's beautiful. So it, you match the male and the female. So some of them are easy, but some of them can be a little tricky because the male and the female don't look similar. And there's a lot of them. So when I first started doing this with my kids and they were little, I would only do half of them at a time. But then you have to make sure you have the matches for those half. Don't just grab half the cards. Uh, this is the last thing that I want to show you. And that is um, in my nature journal, and my daughter did this in hers too, and I think I might have done a little bit for my son and his, but he wasn't really doing it himself, is I started this um, bird notebook, and this is based on you know, Charlotte Mason's, um, I, I believe that in Charlotte Mason they would do these lists in the backs of their nature journals um, for things like birds and flowers and trees. And so I've been trying to do that a little bit, and it was really fun to do with the birds this spring, because um, it was just, after a long winter, it was so nice to hear them sing and have them be back. And so we recorded... Um, the name of the bird, I also put in the Latin name, their order and family, where we saw them, and where, and, and the date. So it was also kind of fun to learn what was related to what. So most of the birds we saw were in the order Passiformis, which I believe are like the songbirds. Um, but we did have a duck, which is Anseriformis. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so don't, don't get mad at me. And the morning dove was actually different. It was Columbiformis. So, oh, and we saw a northern harrier, which was super cool. We were able to identify bird of prey, um, which is Axiptriformis. Accip Again, not sure if I'm saying that right, but it was a different 
it was a different uh, order. So it was kind of fun to see all that. So I would highly recommend doing this. I would actually, if I was going to do a more in-depth bird study, which I will do in the future, I would get a separate notebook and start that in the front and then do more in detail on each bird and any other bird you want to study. Maybe follow the instructions in birdology. And I think you would have a great study. Now, there are a lot more resources out there that you could use. I hope that was a good start for you on uh, any bird unit study or if you just want to grab a book on birds because you're interested in it or your child's interested in it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. Please give me the thumbs up if you liked this video and subscribe below if you want to see more, a lot more homeschooling gardening baby videos coming up soon. Um, so until then, I hope you are well and I will talk to you later.